Hi, I am Joel McLeod. I'm Roland Tana. And welcome to another episode of the 905er. Uh, today we are going to be having a fun filled episode filled with politics and back and forth and all sorts of fun fun antics that you're used to. But before we get to that, we want to pass along a quick reminder that if you've been enjoying what we've been doing, what the what we've been bringing to you and the stories we've been talking about and the guests we've been having on, what we need from you is to throw us a few bucks. Uh, your financial help would go a long way to helping keep the lights on here at 905 or headquarters. And to do so, we'd very much appreciate it if you would take a look in the show notes and think about becoming a monthly Patreon supporter for only five bucks a month. You get to keep uh, keep us uh, going here at 905 or and if you can't do that, you just want maybe just one time uh, donation, one time support. Feel free to buy us a coffee. Uh, again, the links are in the show notes. Every little bit helps. And now on with the show. So, Roland, what is in the news? Yeah, well, it's a couple of big things. I mean, really provincial things, but certainly things that have major impact on on the nine hundred five. First one is is uh, uh, the. Ontario Liberal leader Stephen Del Duca uh, announced at the annual AGM last weekend a fairly big announcement about um, uh, ranked ballots um, as as uh, first saying that, as would be expected, that the, the Liberal government would reintroduce the ranked ballots that were uh, abolished by the PC government. But secondly, that, that he would... Um, then also passed legislation to to implement ranked ballots as as the provincial electoral system. Um, there was no talk about any referendum, uh, no talk about alternative methods. Just simply, that's the method we're going to use, and that's the method we're going to introduce. And that well, raises a couple of points. I mean, um, and I think it's one where we we have slightly different opinions. Um, so we can explore those. Uh, Joel, you're you're a fan. Am I right? I, I I like ranked ballots. I think it's very easy to understand. It's more accurate for for people to to get behind, and it's more importantly, I think it's a way to cut down on on the the rhetoric and the partisanship that we all get so tired of. You know, it, it's one of those things like you 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 kind of have to fight for the middle more. You don't have to worry. You can't because you can't re- necessarily rely on your core your core people anymore to uh to to bring you to power or you, you don't have to worry about dividing people you actually have to say no if i if i want to win this seat i know i got it i don't have to be your number one choice i might have to say can i settle up to be your number two and that's the uh and, and and to do that you know that means compromise compromises have to be made or you just have to be a little bit more reasonable a little bit more personable uh to do so I yeah I mean I'll start off by saying that I've said for many years that I would take any any system as a step up from the system we have first past the post is indefensible and bad and and yeah would I rather have ranked ballots yes the problem is that I see are twofold uh, one that this is how the federal government got into the mess they got into with with um, electoral reform basically going and saying we're going to get uh, we're going to introduce a new system and then heavily hinting that ranked ballots was the one that they wanted uh, and then finding that they didn't have the support that they thought they had um well, that no that, that, that then, front, that's not what happened though that that they 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 went on and they tried to do this referendum where they asked everybody what did you what do you want and he had 20 you know 30 million different suggestions and so that's you know that's it's I think what's different this time is that Del Duca just says, no, this is what you're going to get, which is a lot better than what Trudeau did. Trudeau thought he'd try and try. And yeah. I mean, have but, a, but, have but a by choosing ranked ballots for the, for, for a liberal party to choose ranked ballots, I think it opens you up to two accusations, which is you're picking the system that's best for you because, you know, the, the criticism of ranked ballots is that, that it tends towards the center. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's a powerful criticism. If you are not using any kind of form of... Now, I'm not a fan of referendums. Referendums have caused all sorts of problems <laughs> in recent history in various countries. Uh, and I'm definitely not a, f- a fan of them. I uh, don't see why they have to be used when we're talking about electoral form when we don't have a referendum if we're declaring war on somebody. 
However, I think there are very good arguments for, for multiple different electoral systems. I voted in a, in a system which was, which was I, I think, ranked about so absolutely perfect for a municipal system that absolutely is fantastic. It works there because it means that you don't get this ridiculous system like we see in, like we saw, say, in Burlington, picking at random, of someone with about 10% of the vote winning a council seat because you have to get to 50% to um, to actually win. And that means that the second votes are going to count. Um, where I think it works less well is, is at a provincial level when you're dealing with parties. As I said, I'd still take it. I would still take it. I just think well, that there's, there are issues with, with, with a Liberal Party opening itself up to the criticism that it's picking an electoral system that, that will guarantee itself um, a stronger position than it already has. Okay, well, let's talk about the elephant in the room then. Everybody associates liberals with not f coming through on electoral reform promises. I mean, Tr Trudeau got, elect got elected back in 2016, was it? Uh, he, he, you know, first mandate he got elected on the promise like that was going to be the last election we're going to have with the first past the post as our as our our system and we've now had two elections since then <laughs> first past the post i want which kind of, kind of brings me to del duca's other promises in the uh in the, on the weekend in the speech which was in addition to the ranked ballots he was also going to bring in the four-day work week which is interesting in, in itself. And then he was also going to bring in, bring back the pi basic income pilot project that uh, was supposed to continue underneath the conservatives, but the conservatives canceled it. I mean, those are two very big, hu huge thing, you know, huge things for the public to, to digest, especially it coming in post COVID, uh, you know, the, ba the basic income and the four day work week are huge. I have to uh, say, you know, with the with the four day work week, I literally have no clue what the argument is in favour of this, uh, and it's news to me. So, I mean, do, do you? I mean, other than I, let's have a longer weekend, what's the what's the argument? I think that's it. It's have, have a longer work, have a longer weekend. There's there's no, I mean, there's there's lots of thoughts that we don't need. We do, like we don't need a a, a standard five day work week you know the the apparently in in new zealand spain scotland iceland th this is being considered uh it ha i i i think it'd be interesting i think it's an interesting play to make of focusing more on people which is and it, it, it's a, an interesting way, way to frame i think to, to a political strategy for the liberals to pursue because i mean they, they are decimated they 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 are they haven't even gained any seats since <laughs> uh really like they've had they've had uh, a couple of the members leave that leave the party to go run federally i don't know there's, if there's been remarkably few by-elections this term right, it seems right. to me so they, they um, haven't they, they haven't had an, op an option to really expand their their caucus Mm -hmm. They they are they are still bleeding members, so they kind of have to come in, kind of swinging for the fences and making huge promises to start getting mm. getting attention. This is a good one, I think, to get attention. I, I mean, <laughs> but that's another criticism I'd level at ranked ballots. Uh, in the, yeah. from the perspective of current politics in Ontario, I do not. No, I'll, I'll be completely frank, and I apologize to friends who are listening <laughs> not going to like what i'm about to say i think there's no way in god's green earth that stephen del duca is going to form a majority government next year no uh, i think the best oh. case scenario is as a minority of a progressive party looking for support from one of the other progressive parties best case scenario from a progressive point of view obviously which is pretty much what we have here in that situation to to have already ruled out a mixed member proportional uh, as a viable method of running elections, which is used in New Zealand, which is used in Germany, which is used in many countries, I think more countries than ranked ballots, certainly. The only ranked ballot country I can think of is Australia, I believe, but uh, could be wrong. Um, I think is, 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 again, you know, the NDP are not going to support ranked ballots. Not in a million years are they going to support no. that. You've got to look at ways that you can compromise and get, we need a better electoral system. To say we want the system that favors our party is is already shooting yourself in the foot. 
Well, I mean, it's, um, it's, it's a shooting itself in the, I don't think it's necessarily shooting himself in the foot. I think it's a, he's able, it, he's playing the politician. He's able to garner, grab attention to him because, ooh, bring it's, we're talking electoral reform. The thing is, everybody, the ironic thing is because of Trudeau making the promise when he did back in the day and then um, goofing, you know, not following through on it. He, he like the, the appetite is there. People every the last two elections, people say, "Hey, we're not supposed to be reluctant having elections this way. We're supposed to be doing it some other way." Um, and so that the intention is there. So I think Del Duke is kind of capitalizing on it by saying, "Hey, I'm going to be the guy who changes in Ontario how we elect our our, our members of provincial parliament." Ooh, that's interesting. I'm like you. I, I don't think Del Duke is going to win majority government. Uh, I don't. I, I don't see the, the liberals having the strength to go, push forward with that. Uh, I don't necessarily think that they have the organizational strength right now to push ahead and do that. They might have a few great candidates. I think they have a couple of interesting candidates. Uh, I won't go into it. But th- nobody there is really wowing me. Uh, I, I you know, and I think Del Duke is trying to grab a little bit of attention for himself, as Trudeau did back back in the day let's swing for the fences let's promise outrageous things and i'll be honest i quite frankly i think it i i don't think this any of these suggestions would be on the table if del duca was in opposition like the the leader of the opposition um or or going for a re-election to to become premier you know i i, I this is this is very much let's swing for the fences and just try and and grab attention is he gonna it, is it gonna work I, I I think he'll I think he'll pick up some seats. I think he'll he'll take some seats away from the conservatives, um, maybe some from the from the NDP. But uh, it'd be interesting. I mean, the the, the so I don't think this is any secret um, to anybody. Um, you know, when the OLP, the Ontario Liberals, had their leadership convention. I mean, Del Duca ran away with with it. You know, it was uh, a the, the most boring leadership convention ever um won on the first round and you know that the the mood was we went too far to the left with kathleen Wynne, and now we have to go back to the right i have a real problem with the logic behind that because it's like where are you going to get your votes from if not from the ndp mm-hmm. you know i don't think the problem with with the olp the ontario liberals at the last election was that they were too far left. It was that, that the world had decided that they had enough, they had had more than enough of the Ontario Liberals for the time being. Thank you very much. We talk about basic income. We talk about many of these things, which, which Del Duke is talking about bringing back. He's talking about bringing them back because they were popular things. These were key mm-hmm. platform issues of the last Liberal government. It wasn't the policies that did it. It was the, the perception that these guys need to go. They've been around too long. Well, also we're we're coming out of the pandemic now, and the basic income pilot. Like, there are a lot of we've we've talked about on this podcast. Uh, you know, CERB and and the and it's now CRB. A lot of people say like that it works. It it works to drive up wages. Like you know, we keep we keep hearing about people complaining. Oh, CERB doesn't keep anyone. It keeps people staying in their in their homes. And the argument is, well, if that's the case, then pay people more than what CERB pays them. And you'll get people coming into your shop to, to wait tables or, or serve customers or, or whatever have you, or make your job, make your workplace a more hospitable place to come in to work uh, if, if you need them so badly. And which, you know, we've, we've talked with uh, uh, Jesse Golem and, and, and uh, Deirdre Pike on, on this podcast about the UBI uh, pilot project and how it helped get Get, get folks stable and, and able to to start businesses and, and be financially independent and all that stuff. I it, 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 It's a program that probably its time has come. I'm, kudos to them to say, yeah, I'm just going to bring it back, finish the pilot project, get the data, and probably roll it out within the first mandate of, of, them, of them doing so. Are they going to do it? Probably not because I don't think they're going to form government. Now, the, the NDP might say, okay, we'll, we'll do it with you. If there's if they have like a, an NDP uh, liberal coalition, or at least the NDP brings it in, they might say, "Yeah, we'll bring it in." Liberals should support it now. I mean, yeah, I mean, which brings us back to, and I'm not going to repeat my my repeated rants about 
why Canadian politics is a coalition free zone uh, and why we have this crazy situation of governments trying to govern from a position of not having enough seats mm -hmm. um, I don't get it it's crazy you, <laughs> but there we are that, that's what happens so um, yeah uh, there's a good chance that what we'll end up with is the Liberals and the NTDP collectively with enough seats to bring down the Conservatives, but actually propping up a Conservative government because they won in highly inverted commas by having more seats than the NDP or the Liberals singly. It's just, it's just like, it's like no one understands the rules of our parliamentary system somehow uh, and points out, it's like, no, this is not how it's meant to work. Winning the most seats doesn't mean you won if you can't control the House. It's controlling the House that matters in our right. system. And who controls the House can be any mixture of MPPs or MPs you, you want to put together. I don't get it. I simply don't get it. And it, and it misses the opportunity that, that, that minority governments can be periods of enormous innovation, which we actually saw in Canada when, with Pearson and uh, uh, working with the NDP um, for... Uh, uh, Brought the, uh, brought Medicare, the flag, I think. flag, Medicare, yeah. uh, uh, much, much of the welfare state that we uh, know and love. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, that was an instance of two parties in a minority cooperating together to get stuff done. Why we can't do that anymore, I do not understand. Well, well not understand. wait and see after the next provincial election. I, I suspect Doug Ford will come back as premier only because I think the uh, the NDP and the Liberals will divide that that race. Uh, pretty well. No, I could be wrong. I could be wrong. I mean, I was wrong about Trudeau not calling the election. You know, I'm, I'm wearing pie on my face perpetually for that call. So <laughs> I could be wrong about this one as well. Um, but I, I, right now, I don't, I mean, I don't think the, the love is there for Doug Ford at all. But at the same time, you look at the game, uh, he's got, he, he's got a divided progressive wing of the province that, you know, yeah, well, and I just don't see, I mean, I was saying on Twitter the other day that and Andrea Horvath is an interesting person. I mean, she's she's a survivor. Goodness knows she's been around. I don't even remember. I've been in Canada for quite a long time now, and I can't even remember who the previous leader of the NDP was. It's so long ago. It's before I was involved. Um, I can kind of do know, but... I can't tell well, you the name. No, you know what? We should we should invite Andrea on. She's from uh, she's definitely from the nine hundred five. Her her and Stephen. Hey, Ott. she's she's my MP now. Well, there you go. <laughs> she, go call her office up and tell her to come on. But her her and yeah. her and uh, and uh, Stephen, I'd both welcome on to to you know what? Have them on at the same time. See if there'd be a talk of a coalition in the works. Well, I would love it if they did. I. Not holding my breath, but um, I mean, and I'm talking about the coalition side of things. There, um, I absolutely hope uh, that they would come on to the well, podcast because, yeah. Well, we've gotten a bit off topic, but the the other we're keeping on the the politics bandwagon. But the other topic we wanted to talk about uh, was the other political party in the uh, Queens Park Legislature, uh, the Progressive Conservatives, and more specifically that Steve Clark, the Minister of uh, municipal affairs decided that he'd single out writing an op-ed uh, into the Hamilton Spectator advocating for, of all things, uh, boundary expansion that's currently uh, up for debate in, uh, in in Hamilton City Council. Yeah, so you know, we're going to do a, hopefully we're going to do a, a full episode on this uh, with with people involved on on the front line, so to speak, uh, soon. However, you know, the context behind this is that the Hamilton Council did an unusual thing for a council, for any council, of actually doing some fairly major um, consultations by sending out a, a load of surveys to people saying, do you support boundary expansion or not? Boundary expansion means change the boundaries of the city and then build on what used to be protected farmland. Uh, and that would be overwhelmingly single family homes so what we tend to call sprawl single family homes car centric uh, development the race kind of development that this same government uh, the ontario government and the previous liberal government and any government you care to elect uh, will tell you is the wrong kind of development so 
the the, the, the results came back uh, and uh, not uh, overwhelmingly uh, against expanding the urban boundary in, in support of um, you know, increased density and and making uh, making sure that new homes are within the city limits which is kind of an amazing thing actually in many ways um that you know the if you know basically you have a a a, a community voting for uh, more density more high rises certainly more mid rises um uh rather than saying well let's stick these people out where i don't have to worry about them uh so voting for the environment uh, over their convenience in some ways well i i I mean, we've, we've talked about the need for smarter development uh, many times on this podcast. I, 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 invite, I mean, if you're a newcomer to the podcast, go check out our, some of our episodes with Mike Moffat on the, on the housing prices uh, in the 905 in Ontario in general. We've talked a lot about this. And the, I mean, the, the minister is right that part of it, we need more uh inventory on, on the market to start kind of bringing housing prices under back under control. I agree with that. However, just building out is just punting the 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 can down the road, so to speak. Like it, it we, we, you build you build out these neighborhoods for single family detached homes. It, you just kind of you're 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 spreading it out. Now it's, it's one of those things that this the current provincial government doesn't seem to either get the science behind the, behind this or the economics behind this. What, I mean, I know that we've one of the a lot of the advocates uh, in Hamilton are asking for more infill, and the reason why I mean, if you've been downtown Hamilton, you know, Roland, you, you've you've probably, there's plenty of space for infill. There yeah. is there there are so many parking lots. There's so there's many funny. parking lots. There's so many mm. old buildings that quite frankly, yes, I'm I'm in favor of protecting the architecture of many of the buildings in Hamilton, but there are some buildings that have just been let go so bad that they're beyond salvaging. Okay, mm. tear them down. And build something that's affordable uh, and, and and progressive and, and that kind of thing in the uh, in the downtown core and help build that up. I mean, that, that the, what they're and what the minister's solution is would end up. It's just going to be a cratering of Hamilton with the downtown just this blight and hollow and and unworkable and everybody kind of well, working building up going up the mountain up to Stony Creek and Castor and just everybody having to live farther and farther away from Hamilton. Well, I, I think we already know this, but, uh, you know, a famous quote of Rob Burton that comes back to my mind all the time um, is that Ontario isn't run by the province, it's run by a group of bloody developers in, in from Vaughan. Uh, and, and this is a classic case because the arguments that uh, uh, Clark uses in this op-ed are the exact opposite, the exact opposite of the arguments they use in every other city, every other municipality in the 905, where they say, well, we can't go out, we've got to protect the green belt, so we've got to go up mm -hmm. in your downtown. And and those are fine arguments. But then we've got the same guy going, well, you know, uh, you know, we can't build downtown in Hamilton because we've got to protect all those sens sensitive neighbourhoods all of a sudden. Now, since when have the PC party of Ontario given a rat's ass about sensitive neighborhoods. They don't. It's all about the developers. In each of these instances, the developers are pushing and they're pulling the arguments to let them build. This government, and I'm not saying, you know, frankly, I'm not arguing that the Liberals were were much better when it came to development. They, you know, the Places to Grow Act was a, was a way of letting developers develop and we want people to build the problem is we how building is done in this province so often delivers the wrong kind of building in the wrong kind of place well it's one of the things that we've um, that we've been advocating on this podcast is in smarter development you know think about more you know a, a more comprehensive a more holistic approach to development not just okay let's put a condo tower here and a condo tower there the idea is well okay if you're going to build more living space make it livable so you know you, you got to build more more shops more 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 transit more public space for people to be able to enjoy live eat breathe all that stuff i mean one of the things we're talking about was as people live closer to home you know you could think about turning jackson square into a more communal area where you'd have more restaurants you know that cater to people working from home 
especially if you're living in the downtown downtown section. It, that that in itself takes a a lot of for planning. One, one of the things we always talked about was what if the provincial government worked with current landlords to find ways of getting these business, businesses out of their leases to free up real estate to say you can convert that into uh, com- uh, the residential units instead of commercial units mm-hmm. and that kind of thing. And you can do all this stuff and this would be a go- great way to free up units, put them on the market and stabilize the housing market, at least in the 905. Yeah, there's so many good ideas that, that are worthy of examination and that this government will never look at uh, because they have no imagination beyond let's get back to normal after COVID. Let's everybody get back into their cars so they can commute. But that's the thing. Let's create commuter homes. That, that solution um, worked at, barely worked in 1994, let, let alone 2021. Like, you know, just saying, oh, let's build, a, let's build new highways. Let's just keep building out another, another subdivision, keep moving out. And, you know, here's the other thing we keep talking about is um, they tell you, oh, we need to keep building out, you need to keep building out. But not just the environmental side, but we also have the issue of the Six Nations, which is on Hamilton Hamilton's doorstep. And, you know, they've they've come out and said, no, we're going to, once you get into the Haldeman Track land, which is not that far away. From the, the well, and a related related note to that, um, I believe there's been a ministerial zoning order today for Guelph uh, that basically gives the go ahead for a major development there, which is on the Haldeman Tract land, and 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 I think the Green Party actually issued a a press release saying, you know, this should this shouldn't happen. So yeah, they're there again. Everything you do is so arrogant and we don't care about the whole discussion going on about uh, first nations at the moment uh, about how uh, the, the very viable and, and genuine disputes over over the Haldeman tract status we're just going to ignore all that and we're just going to ministerial zoning order the whole darn thing and let the developer right. develop um again hamilton has the right to say we do not want to change our urban boundary that is the municipality's right and they are just gonna overrule that i mean that is overruling democratically ele- you know whatever you think about the current council it was elected fair and square it has that right and in this case seems to be leaning towards doing the right thing we should say no we want density we believe this is good for hamilton god knows it will be good for hamilton to have more density to fill in all those 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 areas which uh which need to be filled and yeah. not be, you know, when sweat parking lots. It, it begs the question of who is this government actually listening to? They, you know, when they were first, Doug Ford first elected, it was all about for the people. And it's very, it's becoming very clearly that the people who are saying, we don't want this, we don't, we, this isn't the direction that we want the province to go into. The, the, those aren't the people. Doug Ford and the provincial, the provincial progressive, progressive conservative party are listening to. Um, I, I have seen only one group of people, this part that this government has again and again focused all its attention on. Uh, I mean, it comes to the other big announcement this week was, was uh, Doug Ford basically saying highway four, way four, one, three is going to happen. Come hell or high water. Mm-hmm. Well, the only people who seem to be, front and center in in wanting that highway are developers again i mean it's about unpicking the green belt piece by piece and and all these things all these things which impact the 905 region deeply at every level are all about development Mm. again and again and again and i mean i'm not a conspiracy theorist as a rule i'm quite i'm not that kind of person who's like you know it's all they're all out to get us or whatever the evidence is just there and it's overwhelming. It's the developers again and again and again. They are so deep in the pocket of these guys. It's just not funny. Uh, well, yes, and, maybe that's where we have to leave it off you gotta, uh, you know, for this week because we're coming up on our half hour time limit. Um, but we're going to be back next week, hopefully, with uh, a little bit. We, we want to keep touching upon this, uh, these topics because they're, they're importantly, they do not seem to be going away. So I will leave it at that. And thank you very much for listening. We'll talk to you next week. Bye for now.
That's it for this episode of the 905er. Thank you for listening. As always, you can send us your feedback, thoughts, and concerns, or ideas for future episodes to our email, info at 905er.ca. We'd love to hear from you. You can help us keep the 905er going by financially supporting us through Patreon as well as PayPal. Visit us at 905er.ca and click on the support tab. As well, links are in the show notes for your convenience. Lastly, you can find us on social media. Search for the underscore 905er on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn. So long for now. See you next time. to make the most out of this life and optimize your personal wellness then check out the natural man podcast join me host mike c as we explore all areas of human wellness physical mental and emotional learn strategies to optimize your own well-being and be in the driver's seat of your own health remember your doctor works for you learn biohacks neurohacks ways to improve sleep and ways to optimize your body and your mind. Check us out on Apple, Spotify, the Fountain app, and at naturalmanpodcast.com.